night or, oh, like that would have been tasty with coffee, but. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in building like a, a liquor cabinet eventually because I always need like this much and I don't have it. So, ah, now we're live. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Cucina Quarantena. Tonight, we are being joined by my friend, Don. Hey, Don, how you doing? Hi. Good. So Don and I know each other because you have been following Adventures with Sarah for what, like six oh. years? Years. <laughs> yeah, like from the very beginning, I think you started. And we didn't even know each other. No. And, and you came on, you signed up for one tour, but then you guys moved to Japan. Yeah. And then eventually you did come on the Thailand tour and we've been friends ever since. So yeah. um, Don and Steven live in Rhode Island and they have two beautiful Italian greyhounds. Are the greyhounds one of there's Steven. Oh, and there's one of the greyhounds. They are so sweet. They're like babies. Yeah, they're adorable. One is just <laughs> lounging in her bed. What a sweetie. So I've never made fudge before and I have no idea what I'm doing. So you are going to have to instruct me. So I'm going to turn the camera. And this I think is a fun idea having you guys teach me how to cook. <laughs> So I used to make fudge with grandpa. Of course, he made it before I was old enough to really get involved. But then it does take quite a bit of stirring. So he would recruit us as labor. <laughs> Come up and help <laughs> make the fudge and you stir. So it's, uh, that's why I still make it. Of course, grandpa passed away back in 2003, but I make fudge and my, my brother loves it. So this batch of fudge, I'm actually going to pack up at least a half of it and send out to him. So cool. that way he'll have fudge too. Yeah. Um, it does make a lot of fudge. It's about, I wanna say three to five pounds of fudge at the end of it. Um, and it does have a lot of sugar, which is what we're gonna start with. So if you're ready, I'm all right, ready. Let me grab my mystery cup, uh, okay. I've got my sugar, I got all my, all my stuff. Let me aim my laptop so people can see what I'm doing. Oh, Okay, so I've got my, my Dutch oven and I've got all of my ingredients. All right, so tell me what I'm doing. So first we're gonna measure, let's measure the sugar in first. So okay. if you're doing a whole batch of fudge, it's four and a half cups of sugar. Ooh. But it's super easy to make a half batch. So then it would just be two and a quarter cups. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Two, three. <laughs> Four, five. <laughs> I'm using a half cup to measure, so there's a lot of. Them. Oh, I was gonna say, are you making like a quadruple batch? No, it's just easier to fit the half cup into the sugar bin. So okay, nine. so our, our ingredients that I've got lined up here, we've got sugar, we've got Pepsi di Chocolato chocolate chips. Perfect. We've got. Uh, Evaporated milk. Evaporated milk. Mm -hmm. We've got Mexican vanilla and we've Perfect. got marshmallows and Ding. then salt. Salt. Right? Yep. That's everything. And then I like walnuts. So I have my walnuts on standby. And like I was telling Don, I think I'm going to start by just putting the pan I'm going to end up putting it in is this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and just crush some walnuts and I'm going to pour the, the result over the top of some walnuts, just because that's what I like. I, I like the idea of having like a walnut crust on the bottom of the fudge. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Oh, it'll be fine. I've played with this fudge recipe a bit, actually. Yeah. Um, Steven's family, actually his grandma would make peanut butter fudge. Ooh. So I've actually done it where I made a half batch of regular fudge and a half batch of peanut butter fudge and poured the peanut butter fudge over the top to get like a layered like chocolate and peanut butter. Yum, that sounds really good. Inside. All right. <laughs> okay. And then you can do the same thing with the mint chips that they sell in the store. Mm -hmm. um, I did that one year because I wanted peppermint and regular. So I melted the mint chips down and put them on top of the fudge as well. So yeah, and I guess you could do like butterscotch too or peanut butter chips too, right? Yeah. So you got the sugar in here. Then we're going to add the salt. So about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt just to all the things get salt. Okay. Then we're gonna add in the can of evaporated milk. And I'm just doing a half a can, right? Yep. 
I don't even know that I've ever, I, I stock evaporated milk and I've never been entirely sure why. I know that my grandmother always used to have it around, but I, I use it so rarely. Yeah, yeah I actually yeah. went and bought it just for this. I think that um, it's used in some desserts that are more traditional in Europe, I think, than what we do with it, but. Yeah. I know my grandmother had it, so I think she put it into like cream of wheat and stuff. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. And then to this, we're going to add a stick of butter. Oh, uh, a half stick, stick of butter. butter. All right. Do you want to hold this? Yes. Steven's going to camera for me. This is going to obviously be absolutely zero calories. <laughs> and very healthy for you because it's like dairy and what else? It's unicorns and goodness. <laughs> Exactly. Um, yeah. I had a crazy idea when I was walking around the lake today. I was thinking, wouldn't it be fun to do like a big cookie swap with other people that follow Adventures with Sarah? Wouldn't that be fun? That would be fun. Stephen was asking me today, he's like, are we going to make Christmas cookies this year? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking about that too. I was thinking, am I going to make Christmas cookies, but I'm not going to any parties, you know? Right, and so, I don't want to have to eat all of them myself because I would like to fit into my pants. <laughs> I know, so I was thinking it might be fun to do like a swap or something to keep me from eating all the cookies. So, shall I turn this on? Yeah, I would have, I have mine at about medium heat. Um, and the idea is you just want to melt, the first step is just to melt the butter down and kind of get the, we're going to, have this on medium to medium high heat for about 10 to 15 minutes in order to dissolve all the sugar. Um, there have been a couple of years where I've been in a hurry and you end up with grainy fudge. It's not good. Uh, so it's better to slowly uh, heat it up. Yeah. So it gets grainy so, otherwise. All right. Yeah, it just takes time, this part. So let's see. Oops. Up close shot of my flannel shirt. <laughs> so, yeah. So I had my heat on when I started measuring everything into the pan. Plus the the milk does help like liquefy the sugar a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. this is the sugar, the salt, butter, and the milk. And yeah, we're just gonna heat it up. Like I said, ten to fifteen minutes. Just kind of stir it slowly. You want to make sure that you don't have any hot spots on the bottom of the pan, so you don't burn any of the sugar. Um, but having it over medium heat usually uh, helps make sure that that isn't. This is a little bit like making risotto where you just sort of stand and stare at a pot and stir constantly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. I guess grandpa taught me a good patience for later in life. <laughs> <laughs> patience is not my strong suit. So I'm going to turn down the heat because I know I'm trying to heat this up too fast, but I will be patient. I will do it the right way. So how's, how's Rhode Island? What do you guys think? Do you like living there? Well, unfortunately, because of COVID, we haven't been able to get out and see as much. Yeah. Um, and we're now with the rising cases after October, the governor of Rhode Island has us in a pause. So it's basically like everybody stay home except to go grocery shopping for two weeks. Yeah. So that we can try to cut the, the rate. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we've only been here, you know, for folks that don't know us, we've only been here since July. So we got here and we did two weeks of quarantine because we were moving back from Japan. Um, and since then, we've really, we made a friend at the dog park who has other, she has, she has a whippet. Um, so the dogs play together and that's like our new friends <laughs> since we've been here. Yeah, kind of hard to make friends when you can't leave your house. Right, so... I got the same problem, like from a dating perspective, it's like kind of hard to date people when you can't actually get together, you know? <laughs> yeah. Zoom calls are just not going to do it for, for yeah. the dating perspective. Yeah, not really. Um, it doesn't really work. Yeah. All right. So what am I waiting for? Is it for it to boil or just melt? So I'm going to turn it up a little bit to get it to boil. Okay. So we do want to boil. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just a little bit. 
no candy thermometer is required. No candy thermometer is required. Oh, Just thank you for hearing. saying that, Stephen. <laughs> I was wondering. He's our engineer in the house, right? He's one of the two. <laughs> one of the two engineers. <laughs> I just, because I make it so often, I don't even think about it. I'm like, candy thermometer. What? What? I don't even own one of those. I don't even know when the last time I used it was. It smells uh, really good. This, this, whatever this is going to be, it sure smells good. How could it not? It's like rainbows and unicorns in a pan. Yeah. <laughs> So one of, her, one of our, my friends who who uh, travels with me a lot, she's been on a lot of tours with me. She ordered like all the things when I put them out on my Etsy shop. So I have been holding on to all the things because like I, there were so many like little packages. I thought I'd make one big package. So this uh, mystery person who probably knows who she is, is going to get some of this fresh fudge as a little thank you present in her box of goodies that she bought for me. And maybe people who put in Etsy orders might might end up with a little piece of fudge in their orders. You never know. So excellent. I would say, yeah. So I'm shipping, like I said, about half of this batch to my brother who yeah. very recently moved to Phoenix. Um, oh, from, I'm boiling. Am I supposed to okay. keep boiling? Just keep stirring for about mm, five to 10 minutes. Cause this is the point you just have to cook it a little bit. And so it just takes time. Okay. I don't want to scorch it. So just yeah. like a, low rolling boil just a low low bubble okay not even really a rolling boil is necessary just a little bubbly bubble yeah okay but yeah so i'm actually gonna put some ice packs in with my brothers so that it doesn't melt anywhere in arizona i don't know if it would because it's only 70 but i just want to make sure that it doesn't yeah that's smart it's actually been really nice here in Seattle. It was like 56 today and sunny. Nice. Which I, I know I was telling Trish earlier today. I'm like, it's so nice here. It's like summer. It's 56 and sunny. And she just started laughing at me. She's like, man, you've lived in that state too long. <laughs> but come on, man. 56 and sunny is For like- For Seattle, that's perfect. It is. It's like, it's like a nice June day. Yeah. So if I can- Can you go yeah. super bubbly now? Yeah, hold on to that, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Just pull the pot's too hot. So there's how super bubbly I am. Yeah, that looks about like mine. And I'm just gonna try to keep down a little bit. I'm okay. gonna start watching the clock. It just cooks down a little bit and grandpa never explained why he did what he did. He just did it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. You know, I always regret that I didn't have the patience to have my grandmother write stuff down because every time she was Slovenian and she had all these great recipes. And every time I'm like, Grandma, can you teach me how to do this? And she'd be like, oh, it's a bit of this. And then it's a little bit of that. And you're just like, that doesn't help. I don't know what a little bit of this is. So I actually ended up, I had this memorized. And when I was deployed, I was deployed over Christmas and Thanksgiving and everything, uh, 2012 to the spring of 2013. And somebody asked me, you know, we were on deployment and I'm like, they're like, what do you miss about Christmas? And I was like, well, normally I make fudge. They're like, well, what goes into fudge? And I rattled the recipe off the top of my head because I just knew it. Yeah. But I was like, you know, I need to write this down because between school and work and everything else, it, this is not going to stick in my brain if I don't like, just make sure I write it down so I don't lose it. <laughs> yeah. The only cookie recipe or sweet recipe that I know by heart, and actually my kids now know by heart too, is my my super wonderful chocolate chip recipe, chocolate chip cookie recipe. That's like my my proudest baking thing that I do. And I know the recipe by heart, it's so easy. I even this summer packaged it up in a Ziploc bag, like the ingredients I knew you couldn't get in Italy. And I took it to Italy and baked over there. Nice. Yeah, there's, yeah. it's, we don't really think about it a lot of times when we live in the United States, yeah. the different ingredients that you can get in Europe that you cannot get here or that you cannot get in Europe that you can get here. Yeah, exactly. Um, we made, when I lived in Spain, we had a British friend and she was introduced to peanut butter. Oh, what which you, get? you can't get <laughs> in Spain. Yeah. yeah. So we, we ended up making like a little underground peanut butter railroad. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I lived in Italy in college, my mom sent me a care package and uh, I, all I really wanted was peanut butter and cheddar cheese. 
So she she did end up bringing cheddar cheese to me in Italy, and it was I'm sure not so like awesome to have carried it you know across the world, but I was so grateful for it. Best grilled cheese ever. I bet it's definitely something like yeah. There's just some things you can't replicate. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, this yeah. smells really good. Mm. Yeah, mine's bubbling. It has like, little bubbles that break up the top that are like the size of a dime, maybe, when they they bubble up. Yeah, that's about right. That looks like about the same that I've got. Yeah. And I just keep kind of looking at the spoon to see all the sugars done yet. I melt it down. <laughs> yeah. We're getting there. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if you can see Lincoln. He just ran by me with his new Christmas, Christmas goose. <laughs> oh my God! You, I, you guys, my people watching just pointed out that I made a mistake. What, I put what? the entire stick of fudge in for a half recipe. Oh, the butter. Yeah. Oh. I guess I'm going to have really buttery fudge. Dang it. Okay, so mine's probably not going to work out right, is it? Uh, that may, yeah, the butter may throw it off. Hmm. Maybe I should add extra marshmallows then, right? Yeah, it'll taste buttery. But it should Dang. work out. Okay. Maybe a little extra chocolate. You and I were just chatting away and I wasn't even paying attention to what I was doing. I should have been looking at comments. Oh, well, that's okay. It'll be extra buttery. It'll be fine. Yeah, I think. It'll, all, it'll work out. The other option is to plus up the other things and make a whole batch. You know, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just add maybe a little bit extra chocolate chips and a little bit of extra um, marshmallows to see if that'll balance it out. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it'll be fine. Worst case scenario, you'll have a nice fudge ganache in the fridge that you can have with vanilla ice cream. Yeah, that wouldn't be terrible. There have been a couple of times where I tried to play with the ratio of sugar because I'm like, four and a half cups, that's just so much sugar. Yeah. And one time it was okay, but of course I didn't write it all. I didn't keep it anywhere in a document. <laughs> and the next uh -oh. time I ended up with fudge that was not set. So, but I don't remember how low I had taken the sugar at that point. Okay. So we'll give this a couple couple more minutes before we stir in the chocolate chips. And so, so the remaining, so for the full batch will be 24 ounces, which is two full bags, like regular okay. size bags, like you do for a single batch of chocolate chip cookies. Okay. Or, you know, they have the big, um, you can buy the, the big size, the 24 ounce size bag. So they're just okay. one bag of chocolate chips. And then, um, the vanilla and then a full batch takes a half bag of the miniature marshmallows. Okay. If you don't have miniature marshmallows, you can cut up whole big marshmallows, which I have done before. And that is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but they have to be like, if you do have to use the big ones, which today I was, I went to the first store and they didn't have any miniature marshmallows anywhere. I'm like, first of all, it's hot cocoa season. You people are yeah. crazy. Um, and I was like, I'm not buying the large marshmallows. I do not want to cut them up. I did that one year in Japan because all I could get were the large ones. And it's yeah. just so painful. Yeah. Just so painful. Okay. So let me show you this. So I don't know. Mine looks actually really, really similar. Even if it's got a lot more butter in it, it looks essentially the same. Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of getting thicker. You can see. I'm Super. so tempted to like lick the spoon, but I know I'd like lose Ooh. all sensation in my tongue Ooh. for the rest of my life if I did that. That would be terrible. <laughs> like molten yeah, that sugar would be terrible. on your tongue. Yeah. Ooh. So I've been watching my clock and you guys can see the time here in, in Rhode Island. I would say at like 927, I'm gonna go ahead and mix in the chocolate chips. So two more minutes. This is looking good, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this actually is looking, the texture, I don't, I mean, like I said, I haven't made, made this before, but it's sort of like, um, almost like a caramel sort of texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that if we cooked it down further, we would end up with a caramel. And it does, like, it's starting to get kind of a caramely color. And you can smell hmm. kind of like a combination of the brown butter and, like, caramely notes from the yeah. sugar. Yeah. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more. So now I'm at, like, two... So you're real low. Actually, I'm on a real low setting too. Yeah. Well, and this is, you know, renting houses. You're like, what? What stove am I getting? This is a nice stove, but it is a. It's a, one of the glass top electric stoves, which are not oh, yeah. a particular favorite, but it is nice yeah. and new and it works well. So that's a win. <laughs> I'm so spoiled with my kitchen because uh, I love gas. So I picked out this. They actually don't even make my oven anymore the range because I special ordered this it's an Electrolux and it's got two ovens and it's electric convection but then it also has a gas top which is an oddball kind of thing to want but it was exactly what I wanted and there was only one company making it and I heard recently they discontinued it so I can't so, ever leave this house good news we yeah. have an electric convection oven with a gas top at our house out in Polesbo do you and it's Samsung you have two ovens? It's only one oven, ah. but it is the electric close. oven and gas, the gas top. Yeah, it's close. The Samsung, right? I think the one we replaced had that, and I think we changed it to an all gas. No, you told me it was electric. I doubt the electric. <laughs> 320 to 110. Oh, maybe not. Sorry. I lied. Steven tells me I'm wrong. Right. Okay, I think so. We're at 27, right? Yep, I'm gonna give Steven the camera so he can do this and I can stir because we're at that point. So right. th this stage is kind of critical. Once you pour the chocolate chips in, you have to keep stirring because if you let them sit, the chocolate will burn. Okay. Maybe even lower the heat a hair, huh? Yeah. And this is the part where grandpa would uh, call us for labor. <laughs> Gee, it gets stiff real quick, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's why it's like, oh. oh okay. Do you like the glove? Um, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, hot, hot cast iron pan does not combine well with suddenly massively congealing fudge. Right, that's why like, Steven's like, do you want this glove, the oven glove? There we go. Yeah, okay, so it's turning into a brick real fast here. Yeah, you just have to stir the chocolate into the milk. And if you need to, just take it off the heat. Yeah, mine is not nearly as like nice looking as yours. Mine is much more like crumbly. Do I need, to, should I add milk to it? Um, Probably not. I wouldn't yet. I would try to stir it and see if it smooths out a bit. Because mine, there's a bit in the middle that looks that way too. Like it looks super dry, but I just think that I keep stirring this in. Yeah. Well, of course, my results are going to vary because I didn't, I wasn't <laughs> a good girl in following directions. So, well, what happens when you try to talk and, and do something else at the same time? I know we're just like visiting and I'm not really paying attention. Um, so when do we add the marshmallows? So even mine's a little drier than it should have been. Did they change the size of the evaporated milk containers? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, wow. 12 ounces. Right. That's why I'm like, that's strange. So mine's even drier than it normally would be. Normally at this point, it's still a bit liquidy. Um, and I took mine off the heat because what you need to do is melt down the chocolate, which this is all melted. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I'm going to stir in the teaspoon of vanilla. Oh no. Oh. Like from the duck. He removed the stuffing. Holy cow, this takes some muscle, man. I feel like I can eat as much of this as I want because I've like already pre-burned off all the ex all the <laughs> calories. Yeah, no, um, and like I said, normally, 
this is a little thicker than normal, even for mine. Um, so you melt the chocolate down, then you stir in the vanilla, which I did, because you don't want to stir it in while you're cooking the sugar down. And then we add in the marshmallows. And this is normally when the stirring gets really crazy. And I just eyeball half of the bag. You're gonna need a quarter of a bag for yours. And then I'm gonna stir these in. And right now, it looks like Rocky Road at first, but the marshmallows will melt down. <laughs> I like Rocky Road, so that wouldn't be terrible. I got to switch hands. Get an arm workout. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, this is why I started making it with Grandpa, because you know, when Grandpa was older, he's like, hey, come stir the fudge. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, yeah, it takes, takes some doing to get this done. Ooh. This is weird. <laughs> oh. 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 They smell the fudge. What's up? They smell <laughs> the fudge. Blinking. <laughs> I can't. Here. Sorry. And. <laughs> so. Does Lincoln want to taste? Is that what he's saying? All of the marshmallows melted in. <laughs> then it's time to put it in the platter. <laughs> Stephen had to go let the dogs out. So. There you go. Hey, Stephen. Yeah. Can you? Can you retake over your yes. videography job? Thanks. All right, so you can see like there's no more white marshmallow bits left in the fudge part. Okay. Put a little bit out of the pan. And then I'm just gonna take this over here and put it in the platter. Mine is not quite there yet. I'm getting there. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've done like a full yoga class already. Like my <laughs> arms are killing me. Uh, absolutely. And that's. Okay. There, I think, I think I got it. So I am going to alternately pack my fudge into this prepared pan with the, ouch, with the um, walnuts on the bottom. Yeah. I have a feeling no matter whether I did this right or wrong, it's still going to be super yummy. Yeah, it will be really fun. And you can always try it again later with. You know, not so much better. When you're not talking to somebody who's distracting you from what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you guys should know when Don comes over to my house, we just talk and talk and talk for hours. So <laughs> not real surprise that we uh, got distracted talking instead of cooking. Yeah. Okay. This would be fun also if you wanted to take it in different flavor directions, like you could do like a Mexican cocoa one where you, you added like cinnamon and hot peppers in or something, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, like I think I, were we live already when I was talking about the peanut butter and the mint and stuff? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, just adding yeah. different flavor chips and you can make different flavor combinations. Yeah, yeah. or you could do, um, yeah, you could add different spices, cinnamon or um, like, you could probably even, if you did it carefully, you could probably use peppermint extract in the fudge itself, but you'd want to be really careful that you didn't overdo it. Cool. Or you could also in the bottom of the pan, like crushed candy canes. Yeah. I don't know if you heard Steven. He's like, you could put crushed candy canes in the bottom of the pan like you did with the walnuts. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. That'd be nice candy cane fudge. I need to move out of the kitchen now. I'm warm. <laughs> the flannel yeah, shirt. I, my all the 
all that exercise and all of that. Well, you know what? Darned if it didn't turn out. I didn't think yeah. it was going to, but that looks like that's fudge. Yeah. Does that look like fudge to you? It does. Awesome. All right. And I think it, we have um, a winner. You know, depending on how quickly you want it to set up, you can put it in the freezer. We typically just leave it out on the counter overnight and let it set. And then okay. tomorrow morning, you'll be able to, to cut into it and see how it turned out. Cool. That's exciting. I might even take, I think, a few little marshmallows because I love Rocky Road. I, I always have loved at Seas Candies, the Rocky Road uh, chocolate that they have. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of, I wonder if I can add that now. Maybe I can't, but... I'll try to spike it with a few marshmallows here and there and see if that works just as for experimental sake. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's probably warm enough that if you just set them on there, they'll melt in a little bit. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Let's just do that. We'll put a few on and see if, and see if that works. <laughs> what a fun thing, Dawn. Thank you so much for sharing your family recipe for fudge with not only me, but with anybody else who might want to watch, which is really fun. Um, I'll have to share some of my favorite ones. My, my real family heirloom recipe, is, my mom would have to show us, which is maple bars. She makes the most fantastic, maple, they're like maple brownies. And I've never seen anything like them anywhere else. My mom's the only one who makes them, but they're like addictive. You can't stop eating them. Even What's your favorite, holiday, what is your favorite holiday sweet? Is it fudge? Oh yeah. For me, if, if I don't make fudge, it isn't Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that that's, that's pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Yeah. Awesome. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us uh, for this wonderful uh, fudge making experience and we'll see if it turned out good. I'll try cutting it later and uh, I'll share a picture if it turned out well, which I'm sure it probably did. And thanks so much, uh, Don, for joining us today. It's really fun to see you and cook with you and Steven and, and the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course, now he's quiet. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll see you. I'll see you soon. I think. I hope you'll be yeah. in the Seattle area soon. And for everybody else, I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. We've got. I've got all kinds of fun little surprise things going on this weekend. So thank you for joining right. us, and we'll see you soon. Ciao. Ciao.